Ladies and gentlemen, we are the Bama Standard, your number one source for Alabama football and Alabama legends. We are streaming live right now on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. I'm your host, Over the Hill Powerlifter and Bama grad, Justin Riley. With me, as always, is a former Alabama All-SEC linebacker, Mr. Marvin Constant. And that's it for this week. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I was oh. reading, reading what, my book. Oh, what you got I, there? What you got there, Marvin? Oh, was was, an interesting read. I was reading my fitness book, you know, my whole 40-plus strong fitness line. You know, I was reading uh, my book as I, I prepare for my line. next summer vacation. You know what I'm saying? Got it. So w- before we get started, I got to know, how can I get my hands on some of that so I can prepare for my summer look? 40plusstrong.com. Even as you go into the winter, we have the 40 plus strong hoodies in multiple colors. We have the 40 plus strong workout gloves with the built in wrist wraps. We got them in pink. We got them in black. We got them in gray. Everything you need for your fitness journey. 40plusstrong.com has you covered. 40plusstrong.com. Who is a big sponsor of our show and especially this episode? Guys, check it out. (laughs) Uh, This week, Stephen M. Smith is not available, but he will be with us again next week. So we will keep you entertained and we may, we may be graced by Steve Brown at some point during this show. But guys, we have got a, a special treat for you. We have one of the most hard hitting linebackers to ever play at the University of Alabama joining us tonight. And I don't feel like I am in the right place to give him an intro because, Marvin, you were clearly one of the best ever play the position, so I'm going to let you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest, he actually grew up watching me play. I was his role model. He might not tell you that, but I was his role model. I was his idol. He wanted to be me. Ladies and gentlemen, former all-SEC linebacker, former captain from the University of Alabama, Galveston, Texas, home of Patrick Bates and a bunch of other bad dudes. The one and only Derek Pope, ladies and gentlemen. Blitz, Campbell, got him. Derek Pope. Had to do it, man. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, hey, hey. What's going on, brother? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate the invite. Appreciate the invite. Man, we, we had to we had to honor one of the greatest linebackers to ever play the game, man. It's a shame we hadn't got you on until now, but hey, that's what tonight's for. Hey, I just appreciate it, man. That's a nice helmet you got back there. I wish I had you one. See hey, you see it, look, man. You know, I, I got I always have to represent the best. You know, got to represent the best. I you see, know, I see your, hey, your hey, back too. You, you got to keep it on deck, baby. You got to yeah, keep yeah. it on fire. Yeah, it's, it's roll time, twenty four seven. All day long, baby. The rest of these bums at all these other schools, they don't know nothing about it. They'll never yeah, understand yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> nah, they don't understand. Yeah. And those who can't handle it will be in the transfer portal. So, and we've seen that. <laughs> all right, right. Let's go ahead and jump into our favorite segment, and that is Constance Chaos. And what that is, it's where Marvin gives his unfiltered views on whatever's going on with Alabama football, sports, or whatever's pissed him off this week. Marvin, go ahead and jump in it. Speaking of bums, I'm going to talk about a set of bums who've been bums forever. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons, baby. Y'all been holding my man Julio hostage over there. Julio had to go on there with Shannon Sharp and act like he was talking in a hot mic, not knowing it was a hot mic. That was stage, man. Julio wanted the world to know that he won out of Atlanta and that the Falcons is holding him hostage. Julio said he's tired of losing with these bums. In over 50 years as an organization, they've won zero championships. Who goes from Alabama, man? He's used to winning. He used to get his ass kicked on a weekly basis. Julio won't out of Atlanta, and he won't out now. The Falcons playing this whole game charade. So Julio, it's a chess match. It's a business. So Julio took the next step. He act like, you know, oh, I'm going to say we're going to say this a hot mic. Now, Julio wanted the world to know that the Falcons holding him hostage, and he won't out of Atlanta right now. <laughs> So the holding them hostage, was there a ransom note? I mean, how how'd this go down? First of all, before the draft, they were asking for a first round pick because they're looking mm-hmm. at his salary cap hit, which is a little bit over 15 million. So 
they trying to save face because they overcap and they talking about they overpaying Julio. Hell, he's the best player on your team. You're overpaying Matt Ryan first and foremost. Let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. That's the bum that you're overpaying. It's Matt Ryan. That's who you should have been cutting or trading. <laughs> Listen, man, if I was Julio, I'd have missed some games too, knowing that I got to play with Matt Ryan trash ass. Hell, can't blame that man for that. Come on now. <laughs> Before I get your opinion, Derek, uh, Marvin, what do you think the biggest disconnect is here that's not keeping Julio happy? Uh, he's arguably the best player not only on the team but on the league. How are you not keeping him happy and a smile on his face and – and do whatever it takes to keep him there. That man's still mad about that 28 to 3 lead that they blew. That man's still mad about Matt Ryan not taking the uh checking out the hot checking to the hot read when he see another Alabama linebacker, Mr. Dante Hightower, blitzing right off the edge. You see the man coming, check to the hot read, hand the ball off to the weak side. You got the best kicker involved. Let him kick a field goal. You win a Super Bowl. No, no, not not Matty Trashy Ice. He gonna stay in the play, get sacked. They out of field goal range, and you're gonna get Tom Brady the ball back. You're gonna really get the ball back to Tom. Can't do that. We all knew that that was history the moment they gave him that ball back. All the Falcon fans just start walking out of the restaurant and uh, the sports bar because they knew it was over. Man, listen, Matt Ryan, trash. If I'm Julio, <laughs> I'm insulted that you're trying to get rid of me before you get rid of him. <laughs> That's what I'm mad about. I'm mad that you're saying I'm overpaid when you got this trash can throwing me the ball. Derek, what are your thoughts on it, man? And is it Matty Ice the problem, or what's the, what's man, the deal here? I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Marvin, man. Look, he's still mad over the, over the, over the league long, over the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? He never recovered from that. And at that point, he, all, he I think he wanted out. So, I mean, I think like half his injuries, he kind of just kind of babysit him a little bit so he ain't have to play. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. I, I, man, let's, hey, let's get my boy somewhere else, man. You know what I'm saying? Like Marvin said, he, he used to win it, man. Come from a, a powerhouse program, he used to win it. Come on, he's going to win it. Hostage. Hostage. Fowlers yeah. ought to be ashamed of themselves. Listen, man, here's Matt Ryan. This is why I say Matt Ryan is trash. At one point, you got to realize something. Julio was lining up with Devin Hester, Rowdy White, Harry Douglas, and Tony Gonzalez. Hell, I can go out there and win with them. No doubt. I mean, Freddie Kitchens could have won with them. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, they see, I, I see a lot of things, you know, wrong with Atlanta. Obviously, there's some things going on internally because they can't ever put together a complete team. You know, there there is no defense there to speak of. You got arguably the hottest offense on the, on the in the league. But they can't sustain not a lead. Not, not the hottest. Not we're not no not the hottest. Well, though. I mean, I'm looking no. at the receivers. I've seen him, and I, I and I'm seeing a, a boy from Alabama on the other side. But I they get that. Up. But as long as Matt Ryan is your quarterback, you cannot claim the hottest. As long as you got Aaron Rodgers tossing it, as long as you got Tom Brady tossing it, Drew Brees just retired. He was tossing it. Hell, it was too many quarterbacks better than him tossing it, man. Okay. No, I agree with that, but, but I'm just saying it's one of them. I just he's want not to even a top ten quarterback, if you ask me. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan. I'm not going to argue that at all. Yeah. It's just when you have good offensive weapons and you have the offense in place to do something, but the defense there, there's none to speak of. So my question is, why are you not getting a defense to complement the offense and put together a total package? Because it's the Falcons. They, they, they try ass backward shit. That's what the Falcons do. I mean. <laughs> all right well i do want to get y'all's opinion on this next item man recently uh number 82 uh ranked recruit uh running back commit to texas has decided he is going to opt out of his senior year in high school before i give my opinion i want to know what y'all's thoughts on that this is and is this the trend now derek i'll start with you on that so you said he opt out his his senior year of high school. Yeah, he's going to opt out of his senior year in high school and, and then just go play college ball when it's ready and just train and do whatever he's going to do until you time. Know, I, I really hope that's not the trend because, I mean, when you're playing a game of football, you, you got you got to have all – got to get every experience you can get every year. You know what I'm saying? You got to get stronger, faster. You have to get that game play. You know, uh, it's easy for basketball and baseball to do that kind of stuff, man. But, I mean, I don't I don't agree with it. Hey, I don't agree. Man. 
Hey, my take, hey, if you've done enough to where you got a scholarship and they ready to sign you, hey, keep the wire and tie to a minimum, baby. Do what works for you. Because I've been on the other side when you've been injured. It, it's too com You got to look at both sides of the coin now. Yeah, you right, still right. get yeah, the right. way you go without all the wear and tear, baby. Hey, get there the best way you know how. Well, I, I can see that standpoint. I, I understand that argument. But, you know, what does it say to coaches about team? And, hey, and man, also coaches don't care about team. How many of these coaches you see take jobs and leave at the drop of a dime? Hell, they, you don't even know they're gone half the time. It's the damn replacement who's standing there for them coming to tell you that the coach took another damn job if you ain't seen it on the damn ticker. Hell, Derek can tell you this. Yeah, these I, know, you can't. That. I'm telling you, I think I played, I think I played for four, head, uh, four coaches in two years at Bama and five coaches in uh, four years in Miami. So, man, I can they tell you. They're they 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 not going to come tell you nothing, man. You're going to hear it from whoever yeah. the replacement is or the AD that such and such got a job. And that's only if you ain't seen it on the ticker on ESPN yet. Yeah. Trust and believe. They, drop, they out quickly. Man, so listen. Oh. All this loyalty, man, please. There's no loyalty in sports. It's all business. Yeah, do what you got to do to handle your business. Do you think it's any kind of, uh, I guess, uh, setback to be away from the game for a year, not taking the hits, not taking the contact, not yeah, taking the setback. reps? It's called rest and recovery. Shit, I take that <laughs> setback every day of the week. <laughs> but here's the thing about it being serious. Some people, if you're just that good at the game, you can be away from it from a, for a year or two years and come yeah. back and still dominate the game. Look at Gronkowski. Man took time off, came back like he didn't even miss a beat. Michael right. Jordan retired from the NBA, went and played baseball, came back, dominated, won three more championships. Certain athletes, you can walk away, take that time off, and come back and dominate. Yeah, certain, but not all of them, though. I mean, you just mentioned yeah. Michael Jordan. How many Michael Jordans are there out there? Right. So. It's not all Michael Jordans, but you're looking at it from a standpoint of being a high school kid. If you're if you're one of the top 100 players in high school, you can opt out of a senior year and not miss a beat because clearly you're that much ahead of everybody else already anyway. Okay. I don't, I don't know, man. You know, some, you know I ain't going to say top 100. Like, you know, if you like the top five in the, you know, in the country – then yeah, you know top top one hundred. You know sometimes they they playing with in a, in a, a district where they can dominate everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of elements that goes into it, yeah, but it but what I'm but saying, I hope, though, I hope it don't become a trend. You know? Right. I mean, but even if it does, I'll say this: for those that it benefits, I'm all for it because I've seen kids get hurt in high school that senior year and lose everything, man. So. You just yeah. never know when it's going to be your last play. So, right. I mean, I, I can definitely understand that. But yeah, I was just real curious because this is a hot topic right now. And I'm just uh, wondering is, that this is going to be the new normal. So, just thought I'd touch on that just a little bit. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into why we're here. We're here to honor this man. And I'll go ahead and start us off with some questions, Derek. When you come to play linebacker to Alabama, it's serious. It's, it's not like anywhere else. You know, we're linebacker you. You're following names like Derek Thomas and Cornelius Bennett. So what did it mean to you tank it on that mantle? I mean, uh, like you said, with the names you called out, man, it was – it was for one, it was a lot of pressure, you know. Yeah. And not even from the names you called, even from the from this guy Marvin. Like when he was – when I before I got to Bama, that's all I, – I, I knew who he was already. And when I seen him and I seen his presence, I was like, wow, this dude huge and look at me, you know, but I mean, the standard is, the standard is very high. You know, you, you want to try to prove yourself every day because of what the history of the players have brought to the game. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be one of those players that can kind of fit in that same, if not all the way, kind of be spoken with, with those players, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Absolutely. Say, I got a question. You were the number one linebacker coming out of high school, the number one linebacker coming out of junior college. How in the world did you start your career at Bama as a backup? Well, I'll tell you what, see. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 to this day, I don't understand that because I saw how hot you got once you started playing. Yeah. When I came in, you know, uh, that would have the guy. I think we had uh, Brooks Daniels, Freddie Roach, uh, Cornelius Worthen, But uh, then we had D'Amico Rhines. 
So I was competing with Freddie. You know, Freddie was the he from Alabama. He was the hometown hero. You know, hometown hero kid. Plus, he was a lot bigger than me. You know, I'm six feet. He was like six foot three. But uh, just just being honest, man, the process was different. The process was different coming from high school, junior college, then going to Bama. You know, uh, the playbook was different. The way you played, you know, you you wasn't just using your speed to run. You got to play blocks, do this here, get good reads. So uh, I wouldn't say I, I took a step back, but the, the competition was tough. It was tough. Yeah, man. A lot of people don't understand, man. Like when you're coming from high school to college or, or junior college and you come in, it's like I had Travis Carroll in front of me, damn All-American. And everybody told me I was crazy for going to Alabama with an All-American who's a year ahead of me. Like, why would you do that? You know, some people don't run from competition. They run to it to show the world that, hey, I'm really the baddest dog in the yard. See, yeah. so a lot of people will never understand that. A lot of people, like you say, this whole transfer portal, everybody want to catch out. No, the cream of the crop ain't going to catch out. They're going to make people catch out. See, okay. that's the difference between yeah. a dog and somebody who just pretended to be a dog. Because a true dog going to show up and show his ass. Yeah. And everybody else, he going to make them catch out. <laughs> Hey, you know, hey, look, fun fact, you know, I, uh, I played running back my first year in uh, junior college. Played yeah, I knew, back and, yeah, yeah uh, I knew you were all everything in high school playing running back and you ran track. So you had some wheels. Oh, yeah. I ran about, you know, about uh, a light fofo. You know, I was I was up there. <laughs> I, was oh, up I, 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 I ran him here dead a week. Oh, oh my God. Hey. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, 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 he too bow-legged, man. He going to run. He go, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, being being fast, man. You know, you the, you became the lead dog pretty quick. Matter of fact, it didn't take you very long to start balling out. And I'm leading up to the game you had against Arkansas. You basically dismantled Arkansas by yourself. You know, when <clears throat> we learned about how just how fast you were and faster than Marvin, when you picked off that <laughs> that pass from Matt Jones. Can you talk about that game? Man, that was, uh, for one, that's probably one of my favorite games because I played against two of my high school teammates. Uh, Lawrence Richardson played cornerback and Marvin Jackson played cornerback. So I was already pumped up for that game. You know, it wasn't no, it was no way I wasn't going to play 100%, give everything I had just because mm -hmm. they was on that team. You know, but, uh, man, that game was amazing, man. It was a uh, – I think that probably was my my first breakout game. I guess I'm not I'm not 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 sure, but man, uh, it was just a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? It sure was, man. You definitely introduced the world to who you were, man. And the thing is, it didn't just stop there. It carried over to the next week when you, when we played Georgia. Man, you scoop up scoop up another ball, and you're all the way down the field and score a touchdown. If it wasn't for that uh that false start penalty, man. Yeah. How mad were you when, when when you did all that running and that thing? Yeah, I did. Back? yeah, I was I was mad just because I did all that running. I was tired. Who jumped yeah. outside? Uh, no, nah, Georgia. I'll, I'll start. So they say oh, it wasn't a false start. Then oh, nobody man. moved on the line. If you watch the tape, nobody moved. You know what I'm saying? You so feel like they tried to steal your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, that was a after that was a momentum breaker because after that, we never got the momentum back again. You know what I'm saying? Because they went in, and I think they ended up scoring that same drive. Okay. Just, yeah. But, man, yeah, I was pissed. I was pissed, man. I was happy because, you know what I'm saying, I was on the big screen, <laughs> got uh, 100,000 fans screaming. Yeah. But, but, hell, I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go over there and get that oxygen, huh? You know what? Hey, you know what? <laughs> but it didn't get to keep the glory. Dang, man. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, when they see the video, you know, they just think it's a, they just think the play count. They think it's a touchdown. They don't know he got called back, so I'm good. Long well, video. Yeah. That, that's the only <laughs> that's the only clip I've been showing is just just the touchdown, man. So people will know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one of the things I liked about you when you got on campus, man, it didn't take you long to become a leader. You know, being the new kid on the block kind of takes a while, I guess, to get established. But how did you win over that locker room so fast? He took some notes from me, man, because we had a computer science class together. And I told him <laughs> everything he needed to know. And, mm. I'm going to tell you, you know, because when I came to Bama, you know, I was older than the uh, freshman that were coming in. So being a junior college, uh, 
transfer. So, you know, I didn't I didn't want to come in and try to, you know what I'm saying, be a leader. So my thing was lead by example, lead on the field. So every day in practice, I'm full speed. I'm hitting hard. So when, when the guys start seeing that, they start gravitating to me like, man, this, this dude can hit. He can run. He can play. So, I mean – that, to be honest with you, that's how the that's how the leadership came in, just off my off my play and practice, the way I the way I practice. When we ran sprints, hell, I ran with the DBs. I ain't run with the linebackers. Let me ask you a question: Why you were doing all this? I'm pretty sure Freddie Roach was somewhere in the back talking about slow down, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, Freddie? Yeah, you know he was. Yeah, you know he was. Freddie was big and slow. Man, you ain't got to go this hard every play, man. You could take a play off here and there, man. That's just the way. I, that's just the way I went. You know, I, I knew that I was new to the team. Hold on, hold on. Tell me, Freddie. Tell me, tell me. This ain't what happened. Freddie said, "Hey, Rook, look here. You trying to make us all look bad out here." Hey, hey you know, now, first of all, you gonna have no, to tone it all, down a few notches. Hey, look, first of all, he ain't called me Rook because I was older than him. Yeah, you know what I'm about to say, yeah. So it was, yeah. <laughs> so he looked up to me as a as an older guy, right? You know what I'm saying so that that made a difference too, being a little older than than the guys that was, you know, the younger guys. Hey man, we uh we got a question from our audience. It's actually from uh, one of your former teammates, uh, Anthony uh -oh. Anthony Bryant. Oh, bear the bear, oh, bear, the oh, bear. <laughs> What's up, bear? <laughs> He, uh, he says, can you tell us about the halftime speech when Coach made you repeat the defensive call called Jet Red? Oh, God. <laughs> I plead the fifth, man. I can't even. No, no, man. You can't do that on this show, man. We're, <laughs> we're a safe place, man. Come on. <laughs> hey. Man, Val, know, he, he know that. Oh, hell, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to get him on here so he can, you know, tell the story. Because yeah. he, 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 he feels and he lying a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It really was about him. In, in order to get Bow here, you had to get him to stop from fishing or farming or something else along yeah. them lines. See, so I don't even know if Bow have internet where he lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he got, uh, like I said, I don't even know if he got a cell phone or something. Exactly. <laughs> He's so country. It's crazy. Exactly. He's watching the, the, the feed on uh, Cricket Wireless at the truck stop. <laughs> there ain't even a truck stop down there. <laughs> oh, man. That was a big old dude, man. That dude was huge, man. Hey, yeah. man. man. That dude could bring down a rim, too, man. How did that man get up and dunk a basketball like that? And by the way, he still can. Yeah. I seen – I'm going to tell you what. When I got the Bama, Barrel was squatting almost – they stopped him like at 700 pounds. Mm-hmm. Easy. They stopped him. And I was like, man, that's when I started. I was like, man, I'm in, a, I'm in a whole different ball game now. I got to get my, I got to get my, st my shit together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big Bell, man, that's my boy, man. Yeah, yeah, he sure did show out on Night of Champions, man. Damn, that, that was incredible. Hey, speaking of, of the weight room and, and strength coach, man, Coach Pollard's got a question for me to ask you, Coach P. He, yeah, Coach P. He wants you to talk to us about those prisoner workouts. Oh, oh man! Look at they went prison. They went prison workout. <laughs> when it starts with "look here," you about to hear something. And <laughs> hey, you weren't doing that, but upper body work, man. Is that all you were they doing? Went, look, they went prison workouts. You, you forget? I went to a junior college where we had no weights, so I was I was just doing. I, I had to make it work. I had to make the best of it. You know what I'm saying? So, but no, nah, man, uh, Coach P, man, ah, oh, man, I miss that dude, man. That, that was my, that was my boy, man. Coach P got me up to, I think, uh, I think, yeah, Marvin, what you, what you bench press? You were like at four sixty, five twenty five. Oh, that's a lot. You man, no, I, 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 I was benching four sixty in high school. Okay, there, that, got, that total changes every week on here. Hey, Amen. Yeah. It, you know, I, I went, I went on Google and Google said four six, four sixty five. So somebody yeah, was. It, it, in in high school, I was benching four sixty five in high school. No, what it was was Derek Lasser was on here two weeks ago, and he said he's still hitting four seventy five. And now Marvin's See, told but, going but, up. But, but here's the thing about I have nothing to prove, Justin. So again, <laughs> I have no need to get under four hundred or five hundred pounds ever in life. I don't go over one ninety five. Let's be real clear about that. 
I don't have <laughs> nothing to prove. But in my heyday, yeah, I benched five twenty-five, and then Big T, Big T made me stop, and he won't let me go any higher than. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a question from the audience from Eric Ross. He says, uh, "What's up, Derek Pope? Roll Tide, roll. What are your thoughts on Najee Harris going to Pittsburgh Steelers? Could he be a big fit there?" Hey, first of all, what's up, buddy? Roll Tide. But look, now nah, that's the, I think that's the perfect that's the perfect fit for him. That's the perfect. I mean, you got to look at it. Pittsburgh, they use their backs. They throw to them out the backfield. They're going to run them at least 25, 30 times a game. Mm-hmm. And he's the kind of back that, you know, he need – he don't need, but if you give him 15-plus uh, carries, he's just going to take over the game. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, I think it's a perfect fit. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm happy that he went to Pittsburgh. Look at it like this. Every since the Steelers lost Le'Veon, their offense hadn't been the same. So, they've right. been looking for an equivalent of Le'Veon Bell since he left. And this is as probably close as you're gonna get to Le'Veon Bell, with the set, with the exception of he probably has a few more skills than Le'Veon. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that translates to his game on the field in Pittsburgh. Now, on the other hand, that cold is a whole nother monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they're yeah. thankful you you didn't have to play in the cold at all. Well, except when you travel yeah. down there. We, we played a, we played a few cold games, you know. Uh, yeah, I hate the cold, man. I hate it. <laughs> I was Vaseline up. I, I use a whole jar of Vaseline on my arms, my legs, everywhere. <laughs> man, let me tell you, I had the opportunity to go play in the CFL, man. I told my agent, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go back yeah. home. I'm going to go back home because this ain't for me. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, see, what, look, what people don't know, uh, before I went to Juco, junior college, uh, I went to Michigan. That was my first college visit, and I committed – on the dot. What? By the time, as soon as I got off the plane, I committed to him. By the time that visit was over with, I decommitted. I said, nah, it's too cold. I, I had like a, <laughs> I had a cold for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Man, is, is that why you left the CFL uh, real fast? You were you were in uh, Hamilton, wasn't it? I was in Hamilton. No, I left the CFL because uh, I had got a call back. I had got a call from Buffalo. Okay, and, uh, okay. So, Buffalo brought me in, and uh, I, I, I I took a chance, you know what I'm saying, just to no, go to Buffalo because uh, because then see they wanted me to play defensive end, defensive tackle, and I wasn't nothing like two thirty at the time. You know, they, they in CFL they linebackers like one yeah, eighty, yeah. So yeah. I was like, nah, I couldn't do it. So yeah, I man. Ended up, I ended up going uh, to Buffalo, worked out. Uh, Fortunately, didn't make it, but you know. <laughs> And I couldn't go back to Canada, so I had, <laughs> they came up with a rule that year that you have to play two years because guys like me would come out there and just you know practice, get in shape, play a couple games, and when you get a call from a team, we'll dip on them, we'll leave on them. Yeah, but so I mean, but, but it's business. That's like okay. So when when Miami brought me in, you were actually one of the first first people yeah. I seen when I got to Miami. When yeah, the, I remember when that. Yeah. yeah, so after, after I went down, worked out for Miami, we did all that. My agent called me about two days later, and he was still going back and forth with them about it. He asked me, do you want to go play in Saskatchewan? Like, they, they ready to sign you right now. Okay. Yeah. See, what happened was, I can't go up here, man. <laughs> <laughs> man all I, I, think, all I, I could think about was my knee falling apart in that cold. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it to well, myself. <laughs> Trust me, I, I know all about it, man. Trust me. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Juwan uh, had a pretty good career up there, man. He became oh, a star. Juwan was a stud, man. He, yeah, he, man. He, 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 he made a, a real a name for himself. Like, yeah, he, he like yeah. I think he's in the Hall of Fame up there. Yeah. I, he, he's done just about every award book there is. Yeah, he went up there and balled. It was nice. Hey, we got another question from the audience. Uh, what's up, Pope? Do you think players getting paid for their name is a good thing? And Marvin, I know you want to answer this too, but go ahead, yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm saying good. Cut that yeah, trick. I mean, of course, I think it's a, it's a good thing. You know, uh, why why wouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? You know, these universities they make so much money off these players. Mm-hmm. Why not let them get some of it? You know. Yeah, I, I like getting paid I, for I my mean, name. I think they should. I think they should. 
40plusstrong.com. Hey, you want to pay me for my name? You go to my website, 40plusstrong, uh, 40plusstrong.com. I love getting paid for my name. So I'm going to say you damn right pay the kids, man. Yeah. Because, again, you look at the money these coaches and these universities are clearing. If football makes enough money to fund damn near every sport on campus yeah, sure. and you yeah, still sure. got a surplus, why not let these kids reap these benefits? Because the, the, the truth of the matter is, most of your athletes who are going to be your better players, let's just call it what it is. They come from underserved, underprivileged areas. Yeah. Living in poverty. So you think just giving them a scholarship and a sweatsuit is enough? When your, your coach got 10 calls, he living in million dollar houses, your assistant coach oh. is making a million, two million dollars a year, everybody eating good. But when school ain't in, this kid worry about where his next meal going to come from. Yeah. You right on that. So I'm I'm all down for it. Okay. We say paying us when we was in school. Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said they wouldn't. All right, next question. Move on. <laughs> Marvin. <laughs> Marvin? <laughs> Statue of limitations, right? <laughs> uh, Derek, one of the best compliments I've ever heard uh given to you by several analysts was uh, when they compared you to Derek Thomas and Cornelius Bennett. I definitely agree with that. But what does that mean to you? Man, I'll tell you that, that like for me, that means, that means a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, just to be compared to those two guys, because I mean, before going to Bama, I still was a, a football of, you know, like I love the game. So I knew, I knew who players were. So then I, then I watched the players. So, for them to, to like even mention my name or compare me just a little bit, you know that means a lot. You know, because I mean those those guys are those guys are big. They, you know what I'm saying? They they were huge to the game. You know, well, they, uh, I would have been happy if they didn't compare me to uh, to Luke over there, to Marvin. Well, thank you, brother. Well, thank you. But I got I let, uh, you know. But for me, I gotta I gotta ask you this. You know, as a linebacker, we all have games that we look forward to. For me, it was the game against Tennessee in that and now. I knew they had Jamal Lewis and Travis Henry, who we all knew were going to be first-round draft picks at running back. Right. I, I knew that that was the game that I wanted to play. Everybody has a game that they say, okay, this is going to be it for me. What was that game for you, and how did it go? The game for me, uh, LSU. Mm-hmm. It was LSU, uh, 2002. And I think I, I had a pretty good game that game. I think I caused a, a fumble, like one of the big fumbles. But uh, I look forward to that game only because, oh, because old Nicholas, you know, Nick Saban, you know, because <laughs> you know, he recruited me out of high school when he first left, when he left Michigan State. And uh, I was supposed to go to LSU, but, you know, I, first, I had a grade, so I had to go to junior college. And uh, my uncle, who was on the who was on the coaching staff with me, uh, Coach Pope, Kenneth Pope, at at Bama, you know, uh, Nick wanted him to go coach at LSU with him, but you know, my uncle didn't want to go coach with him. So, I mean, that was a game I looked forward to, and I think I uh, I think I made a tackle on the sideline, and I was like, "Yeah, what's up, Coach? I'm here." And you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but he got me back. I, I, I I'm you, about to ask. He got me back. <laughs> I was going to say, because in 2005, he was your boss. Exactly. <laughs> I'm tell you, if, if y'all already did that story, I'll tell you. But if, if we can wait. But I, I'm going to tell you how he got me back. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Tell we'll, it right we'll, now. We'll right. Come on. We'll, <laughs> tell it. Come on. Let us hear this. I got Which one is it? You want to tell it? Tell go it. Ahead, go ahead, Mike. So, you know, the LSU stuff, you know, me and Nick, Coach Saban recruiting, you know what I'm saying, all that process. So, I come off my uh my rookie year. I think I started like seven or eight games. You know, uh all all the games I started in, I had like 10 plus tackles. So when Coach Saban took the job and he seen me, his exact words were, were I got your ass now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he meant. Look, listen, I did not know what he meant. I didn't know what he meant until, t- until the season started, and he did not dress me out for the first two games. <laughs> first two games, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't get out. Oh my god, I, I, dude, that's so, hilarious! So after, after the second game, he came up to me, said, "You ready to play now?" I was like, 
Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. Yeah, he got me good. It's funny. Yeah. I actually read an article about about you, and it, and it talked about how that season you were sat out for two or three games, but it wouldn't give an explanation why, and then it jumped right to that next game when you played. Now we know. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm telling you. He, he told me. He got me, and that's how he got me. <laughs> hey, yeah. did you learn your lesson about talking trash? Man, me and Coach Big me and Coach say we talked trash the whole season. The whole season. We had we had got a good relationship, so we just talked trash to each other the whole season in a good way, in a fun way. <laughs> I know we're jumping ahead, but I got to kind of piggyback off of that. As Alabama fans, we know how he is as a coach right now, but how was he on a pro level? What was it like being coached by him for the Dolphins? I mean, to be honest with you, he was a, he was a damn good coach in the pros. You know, uh, I mean, other than we practice college style, you know, I think we was we was in pass all the way to week thirteen or something like that, you know. <laughs> but other than that, you know, uh, he was a you know he was a defensive coach, so he always spent time in the defensive back rooms. So he was he'll leave everybody else alone. But he all he was fun. He run around. He talked. He talked to you. You know, he talked crack jokes. Plus, I mean, he was he knew he knew what he was doing. Like he'll get out there and demonstrate what the tell the DBs. On a linebacker, how you supposed to play this? So I think if he would have stayed, man, he probably uh he'd have been a successful uh, NFL coach as well. Hell, if he would have had a quarterback, he probably would have had a more successful yeah, NFL career. Yeah. Because y'all yeah. y'all were down to y'all. It's like what third or fourth string uh, quarterback, Cleo Lemon. Four string, yep. Yeah. He, yeah. he took a chance on Dante Culpepper when we should have took Drew Brees. Yeah, yeah I should have drafted Matt Ryan. Shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Man, y'all are y'all are desperate, man. Y'all had Joey Harrington there too. Come on now. Man, we had we had we had a lot of guys. We had so many quarterbacks. It was crazy. <laughs> I told you, uh, four years, five head coaches. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's a good segue into my next question. You know, a lot of people don't understand what those days at Alabama were like when you were there. Coach Fran ran away in the middle of the night. Mike Price was was out after 20 minutes with Marvin at the Citizens Club. And Coach Shula was uh, starting his first gig as a head coach during probation. What was that like for you? I mean, uh, for one, I knew I knew going into Bama being on probation. I could have, no, I could have, I could have went somewhere else, but I already, I knew the program. I knew what the program had to offer. So I wasn't worried about that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't worried about that that part. I knew that if I went in and did what I handled my business, I get opportunity on the next level. But now to answer uh the coach's situation, you know, uh oh Fran Fran Francione, he you know he kind of did us dirty, you know. Mm -hmm. Bad, you know, uh, he uh yeah, I think he 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 left on us on a on a zoom, not a zoom, they had zoomed in. They had what they used to call it? Uh, AOL video is messenger. Hey, yeah, 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 on a video message. Left us in Hawaii on a video message. Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> hey, after the game, because we I think we stayed that night. We stayed again, and then we got up the morning. That next morning, he left. A, he uh, left us a message. I'm gone. I'm going to A and M. <laughs> but I had the opportunity to leave and go to A and M with my uncle because my uncle was on the coaching staff as well. But I was like, man, I'm staying at Bama. This is why. This is why I want to be. Man, <laughs> the thing I did is stay. Yeah, man. Good. Yeah, definitely, man. Your senior year, you were all SEC, had 105 tackles, five sacks, nine tackles for a loss. But do you feel that because of the times we were in, that your greatness was overshadowed by what was going on around you? Uh, I ain't gonna say. You know, you said greatness. I'm gonna just say my my play. You know, uh, I don't. Go ahead. No, no, like uh. I mean, I don't think it was overshadowed, you know, like uh, because we still had the opportunity. We still was playing against the number one teams, you know, number 14, number five, teams, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we still had opportunities to play against great teams and to prove ourselves, which I think we, we was trying to do. But, you know, we also had the little conflicts with, with the coaching change and stuff like that, you know. And uh, Mike Shula, man, I love Mike Shula. He was, he, was a, he was a great coach, man. I mean, he like, to me, for me, he was a great coach because, you know, he was he was kind to the guys and he and he kind of treated us like like men. 
you know, uh, the other coaches, Coach Fran, and uh, the other coach, you know, it's like, you do what I tell you to do, you know, like, you just get, like they can just rip your scholarship from you, so you just going to run into a wall if you got to. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Coach Shooter, man, he brought a different kind of different kind of coaching style to the game where he treats you like a man. You know, he coach you hard, but he wasn't, you do what I say, or oh, I'm taking your scholarship away. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I love Mike Shooter, man. He's a good dude. Do you think, like, uh, people gave him a bad rap? And Because the way I see it is a lot of people don't understand what he inherited or what he walked into. He got a, t- a team that was on probation, had a whole bunch of other stuff going on, and it seemed every, like every time he started to get ahead, you know, significant players would get hurt, like Brody or uh, Ray Hudson and uh, t- Fro Throw later on. So yeah. I don't feel like we really got to see how good um, or yeah. maybe even bad he could have been. But do you think that people kind of are too hard on him and his legacy? I think, I, yeah, I, I do. I think they are, you know, because uh, to be honest, man, we went through a lot that, you know, uh, that year with him, you know, uh, lost a scholarship. So we actually had a lot of walk-ons. You know, we had a lot of walk-on guys, man. And uh, and they're not saying nothing against walk-ons. They were they were some decent players, but we just had we had to work with what we had. And you know, we had all these injuries come up. You know, uh, Cornelius worried him. He get he uh, I think he broke his elbow or something like that. Who was a a good line, a great linebacker as well. But uh, I don't think uh, he get his credit, man. You know, coming in. What he had like a month to get us ready for the season? Basically that, yeah. yeah so right, I mean, after, right after a day. Yeah. So I mean, they I don't think he, he wasn't that bad, man. You know, we just didn't have all the tools that we needed to, yeah. uh, to be successful like we wanted to be. But I tell you what, we played our ass off every game, though. We ain't give up. Yeah, that's the truth, man. Definitely one of the hardest working games I saw was when y'all played Oklahoma, man. Non-stop, and that's that was one of your best games your senior year, dude. You you lay some folks out in that game. Yeah, Oklahoma game. I think they was they were the ranked number one, right? They were, they were, and we yeah, gave them so, all they wanted. Yeah. So like, what, what Marvin asked, uh, what was the game you wanted to play in? The second part of that question is all the top teams, you know, because we called the money games. That's what we said. Hey, right. this this money game right here. You know, you play against the top team, the number one team, number two team. This is your chance to show the world. What you can do. So when we played at Oklahoma, I'm telling you, I'm 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 trying to I'm 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 not leaving that field until I, I pass out. I'm giving everything I got. Yeah, and you did. Um, I gotta ask you, you know, heading into the NFL draft, what were scouts telling you? Heading into the NFL draft, uh hey, uh, I was too small. You know, uh they was like uh, you know, you could play one well, think about moving to safety or or uh, special teams. So I really didn't get a lot, a lot of good feedback from scouts. I, I really didn't. Yeah, but you sure did uh, make them pay when as soon as you hit training camp, man. It's like it's like you went to a whole other level and you started turning heads and, and, and cracking skulls. Tell us about training camp and how you quickly caught the, the eyes of the coaches. Well, I, just, I mean, I just – I took everything I learned, you know, because at Bama, we – we went hard. We practiced hard. You know, we did everything hard. So going to the NFL, it wasn't not saying it, it's not saying it was easy, but the practice wasn't as hard as it was in college. You know, so my main thing was run fast, hit hard, and if you can do that, you got a chance. You know, what I'm saying uh, mm-hmm. I remember uh, one play in practice, Junior Seau. We had got the, uh, the fullback laid him out. Junior say all came up to me. He said he called me puppy. That's what we called everybody puppy. <laughs> no, uh, buddy, buddy, buddy. He said, buddy. Next time he come here, I want you. To, I want you to hit him. And man, I had to do what Junior said. So we mm-hmm. on nine on seven, inside drill. And I knew the guy was coming at me. I read it went full speed. All I did was woke up with everybody like jumping on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what happened. I didn't hit him with the until we go back and watch the film. Until we go back and watch the film. Oh man, I hit this dude so hard, like I knocked him out his almost out his shoulder pads. I hit him so hard. And, you know, and after that point, after that, it was like all the guys knew that I can hit. And I just I just tried to keep the momentum going. <laughs> you definitely did. Matter of fact, uh it trailed over to that game against the 49ers and Man, that was actually, I think, like your coming out game. That's what—that's one of the things that stands out the most to me about your career early on. 
In that game, you had 17 tackles, a sack, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown, man. You know, tell us about how you put the league on notice in that game. Well, that, that San Francisco game, uh, prior to the San Francisco game, we played in Seattle. And Zach Thomas got hurt. He, he pulled his hamstring. And I think I came in like in the third quarter and played. So we fly straight from Seattle to San Francisco. And the coach was like, all right, Zach can't go. You're getting a start. Mm-hmm. So all that week, I'm studying, 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 watching film. No, I go to my hotel room, watch film all day. By the time the game come, the coach say, Zach said he can go. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But guess what? He pulled his hamstring. He pulled his hamstring on the second play. So that then they put me in. But uh, I think that was a that was like a breakout a breakout game for me, man. I just I, I just tried to give it all I had. But this is funny. What people don't understand is like when you're playing with guys like Jason Taylor, like they don't you can't make no mistakes with them. Mm-mm. You know, you can't you can't make you make one mistake. It's like they ready. They'll put you out. They'll take you out the field. They'll tell the coach, get them, get them out. You know, so <laughs> yeah. But a guy, his, you know, what I'm saying because he was the team leader. You know, and if and I was a rookie, so he felt like I should have made that tackle. Or he gonna he gonna talk crazy to me the whole uh, the whole play until I make a good play. So I didn't want those older, the veteran guys on my neck. So I just went hard. <laughs> Man, what was, it, what was it like, you know, being led by, you know, Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas, and, and Junior Seau, man? Those are some pretty big names that carry weight in the, the history books, man. What was it like learning from those guys? Man, it was it was, it was was awesome. You know, uh, I, learned thing, I learned things from all three guys. You know, uh, Zach Thomas, I learned how to study film. I learned how to, uh, you know, read the offensive line. Uh, if they lean in off, they doing this here like Zach knew – Whatever, every play was going on. He'll call it. He'll call a playoff. So I, I learned that from him. You know, Junior, I just, you know, he was just a, a tough guy. He'd tell you, like, you, you got to go get it. Get your nose dirty. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. JT, it was just, you ain't want to piss him off. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was it was an honor playing with those guys, man. Uh, rest in peace to Junior, man. Uh, good friend of mine, man. I miss him. But uh, it was it was an honor, man. Like, I think I got in, in the right uh, position to play with some a great group of guys, some legends that kind of boosted my game a little bit. Hey, hey, Marvin, who taught you about uh, watching film? See, what happened was <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really watch film. Just the, well, you were in the film room. <laughs> well, here's the thing about it. I would be in the film room paying attention or acting like I was paying attention. Um, I didn't. I didn't watch film. I couldn't watch film. I mean, my attention span is not to the point where I can sit here and study film. But the one thing yeah. I did do, and Coach Rousey did make sure I did, is he taught me what every personnel group would bring. If you understand the personnel group, and, and you understand, like for instance, you look at the tight end and the tight end on the ball. Hell, you know he can't run no damn route. He ain't, he can't go down the field. It's little simple yeah. stuff like that. You look at that back. If he's one and one with the quarterback, or he's one behind, if he's a yard behind the quarterback, you're looking at screen potentially draw. So I knew all the personnel groupings and sets and what would come off the sets. So I'm looking, okay, we got X, Y, and Z. Okay, so you can only do two to three different things. So let's just see what you do, and I'm gonna yeah. go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. you're you're above the coaching staff. Mark, what you looking look at me like that for? Because your screen froze. What'd you say? The screen, the screen froze. I'll say it again. Sorry, man. It's that Mississippi connection. Can yeah. y'all hear me now? Yeah, we hear you now. <laughs> we're, run, we're running short on time. I got to ask you one last question, Derek, before we go to our closing segment. What was your favorite or best moment from your career? And if you have to divide it up between BAM and the NFL, you know, go ahead. Uh, my my favorite moment, man, is uh is being selected to captain. You know, uh, it ain't it ain't even a, a game. It's just being selected to captain to where my handprint, my name, my my uh my cleats are enshrined on the Denny Chimes. You know, forever unless a tornado or hurricane blow it away. You know, uh, that's <laughs> something I can I can take my kids to go see one day. My family, you know, what I'm saying it's it's just that was like a a real precious moment for me. Uh, real like sincere moment for me. So, and I'm proud of it. You know, I'm, I'm 
I don't say it a lot, but you know, I I let people know, hey man, look, I was I was a captain, and that, that's like my most memorable, my best moment of football. That holds a lot of weight. The people, a lot of people, don't understand the importance that is given to to captains. I mean, anytime you're mentioned in that name with all those great people, man, that is one hell of an honor. And you got to think about all the legends that played at Brian at Alabama. Oh yeah, it's a lot of legends. Yep. So, I do have to ask. I, I lied. I have one more question. Talk to sure. talk to us about sacking Tom Brady because. I, li- I like it when he gets sacked. So you did that. You were that guy who sacked him. So tell us. I, I, I hit Brady a couple times, man. But uh, I sacked him one time. Uh, uh, I, forgot, I forgot what year it was. But uh, it was always just anything with Brady, you know, if you can get your hands on him. You know, I, I actually caught an interception uh, against him uh, the year he only threw eight interceptions. So I was one of those guys who got a pick that year. But, uh, man, it, you know, just – Seeing Brady, even being his peer and being a professional player as well, it was like, man, that's damn Tom Brady right here. I just sacked him. <laughs> you know, and and he and after I sacked him, he looked at me and was like, good hit, five six. You know what I'm saying? So for him to say say something to me, it felt it felt good, you know. So no animosity after that uh that orange ball loss we had when Marvin was there, right? You were <laughs> you were trying oh, to avenge, you were trying to avenge Marvin. Man, you are such a hater, boy. I tell you what. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, good. <laughs> I'm just picking. I'm just picking. <laughs> All right. Before we close out, one thing I like to do every week is spend some time talking about Marvin's book. Uh, it's doing very well. But I want to hear it from you, Marvin. Tell us uh, what's going on with it lately, uh, who is changing for the better, and then also, again, how we can get our hands on it. It's a great book. It's helped a lot of people achieve their fitness goals. I mean, look, I mean, it's great content. You know, you learn the, how to eat. You know, I don't tell you what to eat. I teach people how to eat. You know, you got three different workout programs in here, three different six-week workout programs, depending on your skill level. One for beginners, one for intermediate, and one for people who want to take the challenge and do my own personal workout. Hey, because at 41, about to be 42, oh, we still shred it, baby. So, again, it's a great tool. You know, you go to 40plusstrong.com, 40plusstrong.com. We got workout gloves in various colors with the wrist wraps built in, hoodies, patella straps, knee sleeves. El- we sell all fitness accessories, baby. Anything you need to be successful, 40plusstrong.com. That's what's up, man. And I just want to remind everybody, if you have any questions for anybody on the show, either, either us or our, our guest coming up, email us, thebamastandard at gmail.com. Marvin, have you got next week's guest lined up for us yet, or is that still in the process? Well, I, I'm waiting to hear back from this fella. He was pretty angry the last time I talked to him. He feels like he has to defend his honor. So I'm sure he'll be coming on to defend his honor. <laughs> you know, if you like, we can show that clip again just to, <laughs> just to, just to let the audience know what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I, you you what, must what, have it queued up. It? You don't see it? All right. One second. You know, George Teague and Antonio Langham say they carried the team in uh, 92. They say you and Jay didn't do nothing. They say y'all were just there. Yeah, they, they well, you know, it worked hand in hand because we carried them against Florida. They were getting beat like a drum against Florida. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the game. You know, and, 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 and Antonio Langham gets the most valuable player when he's getting beat the whole night. He makes one play and he's the most valuable Ooh, one play. player. Where did they do that at? I give him hey, hey, is anybody, is, it, is anybody recording this? Anybody recording this? Hey, anybody, oh, I got, I, I got I, it. I tell Antonio that all day. I said, hey, let's I'm just, just, wait a minute, hold on. I'm just Say telling you what they said. I'm just telling you what they said now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So we're definitely going to have to revisit that little statement. <laughs> Antonio was not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Ooh. called me soon. That with a man, you get get him back on there right now. I can't, I, the show is over, man. I can't get him back right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely are going to be uh, revisiting that. I cannot wait. Well, Derek, man, we really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, it took too long for us to finally get you, but now that we had you, man, very grateful. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. Thank you guys very much, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. 
If you if you would for the fans who are still wanting to you know see what's going on in your life, you know what's up next for you, and then how can we find you on social media? Well, I'm on uh, all platforms. Uh, just uh, Derek Pope, and and find me that find me that way. Uh, what's going on for me? I'm retired, man. I'm just I'm just chilling. I'm retired, taking care of my kids, uh, being a little league football coach. That's it. Are, are you still in the home of Ball High School? I ain't gonna tell everybody what yet, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, so I don't want to yeah, ask you about what yeah, city you're yeah. in, but you know what I'm talking about when I say that, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check you out, man, because I actually don't be too far from there quite often. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get up with you. Yeah, yeah wait, most definitely. We got, I got your number. Okay, talk. that'll work. <laughs> and man, we're definitely we're definitely gonna have you back again. What we like to do from time to time is have re reunion shows to where you can kick it with your, your fellows from back in the day. So be on the lookout for that, man. We're gonna put something together for you guys. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Well, thank you, brother. We appreciate right, you for man. coming on. Mm. It's always <laughs> good seeing one of my fellow yes, LBs. Yes, sir. Hey, give me right look. That's, oh, oh, oh. He, he made a jump, Marvin. See, man, right here. Physical and mental fitness at 40 plus. You know, 40 because plus. at the age of 40, you got to work out different. Them workouts that I was doing yeah. as in my oh. 20s and 30s, they don't work. I got one more year. I'll be, four, I'll be 40 next year. <laughs> <laughs> 40 note, plus. On that note, great show, guys. Roll Tide. Roll, Roll.